Hi, I'm Antonio Sala, and in this video we are going to discuss the interpretation of some acquisition functions in Bayesian optimization. We'll start by reviewing the methodology and setting up an example, and then we'll discuss the meaning of the probability of improvement acquisition function as a starting point, and then in a SQL video we'll discuss the meaning of other options for those acquisition functions. So if we recall the goal of Bayesian optimization, it was minimizing a function with some statistical model of it. So the basic steps are setting up a prior model, indicating how large are the variations of the function with respect to a given mean, and how smooth the function is assumed to be, and maybe we have some historical record, samples or whatever, and then we must repeat the following steps. We decide with some statistical analysis, which is the best next sample to acquire. Then we acquire such sample one by one, because we assume that acquiring samples is a costly process. So that's why we do some statistical analysis offline before doing the actual experiment. And then once we have the sample, we do some Bayesian update of the Gaussian process model to obtain the posterior. And then, unless some termination criteria are met, we again decide which is the next sample, acquire the sample and update the model and so on. So the objective of this video is starting with the detail of the second step. And the basic of that step is crafting something easy to compute that gives me a hint on how good a sample might be. That something is called an acquisition function. I plug in a candidate X and it tells me how good it seems to be. The key idea is that that thing that tells me how good a candidate sample point is must be carried out with my statistical information about mean, variance, covariance, whatever, and it must be fast in the sense that, okay, if f of x is determining the efficacy of a given treatment on a patient, evaluating f of x takes, let's say, two weeks, but evaluating a of x to decide the dose for next patient maybe takes some milliseconds in my computer. So a of x must be fast, must be based on some statistical concepts, and the x achieving the best value of the acquisition function will be the one we will try in that medical trial or in my drilling seeking for minerals. Then what things can we use as acquisition function a of x? Well, there are quite a few choices in literature. These are the popular ones, expected value. I mean, if the expected value is low, that indicates that, okay, on average, I will get a good performance there. Lower confidence bound. If I am lucky, how low may the function reach at a given point? And well, we have another ones, which are probability of improvement and expected improvement. And in fact, understanding the meaning of the probability of improvement will be the goal of the second part of this video. Once we set up an example to illustrate what these things mean. There are other acquisition functions that require more sophisticated concepts. And then those ones are usually left out of introductory Bayesian optimization materials. And so we will do. So the idea is setting up an example to understand probability of improvement. So let's go. In my example, I will invent a mean function and I will to invent a covariance kernel like this one. And I just invented it because the pictures were pretty. I mean, devising the best kernel and parameters of the kernel is not the goal of this video. With this mean and this kernel, I generated some random functions. They looked pretty. So 
that's enough for me at this moment. Let us see. If we generate a prior with empty data, you can download the code. So pay attention to the conceptual ideas. The code at the end of the file provides this prediction over a set of test points because I cannot simulate an infinite number of points. So I am greeting the interval minus two, two using 201 grid points. Predicting at those test points, I get the mean and covariance matrix. Covariance matrix is a 201 times 201 square matrix. And then I get confidence intervals. And with this multivariable normal random, I can get realizations of those random functions in these test points, of course. And with some plotting, I get this prior, the mean in black, the confidence intervals in dotted red, and well, some of the realizations in purple, green, bluish color. So this is my prior. I think that the true function to optimize may have the shape in this kind of curves in lighter colors. Then in Bayesian optimization, we have a previous history of experimental results. So for instance, we will load my Gaussian process with this four points in X and four points in Y. So this is the prior plus the observed values, the black stars. And well, we may think that, okay, well, all of them are kind of at the edge or even outside the confidence intervals. So maybe my prior should be modified. Well, that is called hyperparameter optimizations. Once I have a handful of points, I may rebuild my prior with some maximum likelihood argumentations. We are not going to do that. This is just a first approach to Bayesian optimization. So we are not modifying the prior, but you know, keep that into account for future refinements. In here, we get these four points and then we compute the posterior. Here we have the standard Gaussian process regression code. We are not commenting here for brevity. The thing is that with this code, we obtain mean and variance at the 201 test points, given the data. With this posterior mean and variance, we can roll the dice to get realizations of the posterior. And with some plotting, here we have the posterior. We have four samples in there. The uncertainty there is the measurement noise and the overall Gaussian process uncertainty confidence intervals are the red curves. And in lighter colors, we have some realizations of the posterior. If we wish to optimize, then we see that, for instance, this one has the global optimum here. Another one has the global optimum here, here. The mean is here. This gray stuff, it's here. So Bayesian optimization is kind of understanding the information that is encoded in this posterior Gaussian process in order to recommend which is the point in which the global optimum may be more likely to be. For instance, I mean, we'll refine on that later. So, well, if I repeat that several thousand times, say 8,000 times, then here you have a cloud of green dots indicating 8,000 positions of the global minimum. And in here I have the marginal histograms on the position of the global minimum in green here and the actual value of the global minimum. So basically the most likely point for the global minimum to be will be x equal one. So we may consider this the gold standard, let's say, but we have some problems here. First, my greeting of 200 test points may be okay in one dimension, but in two dimensions, my grid would be 200 squared. And in six dimensions, it would be 200 to the sixth power. So this greeting approach does not scale well. And also I have here 8,000 realizations 
and I obtained the minimum of 8,000 functions. So again, even if this may be a reference point for something else to be compared, in principle, this is not tractable. Well, there are variations in entropy search stuff that deal with this, but at least in introductory variation optimization material, this approach on finding the probability of the minimum over a very dense grid, this approach is not pursued. And we pursue the so-called acquisition function, something easier to compute than rolling the dice 9,000 times over at 200 grid points or even more. So instead of this, that could be considered an acquisition function, this green histogram telling me how good the point is. The thing is that this acquisition function is maybe hard to evaluate and we seek simpler alternatives. Which ones? Well, the first one we are going to discuss is the so-called probability of improvement, which is computed as follows. This thing normalizes a normal distribution, so it subtracts the mean and divides by the standard deviation. And then with this cumulative normal distribution function, we obtain the probability that a given normal variable with this mean and this variance is below this level. Then, of course, we will call this function replacing level by the best sample. Here we have it, the best sample in my historical records. I will skip further details on this cumulative distribution function. You can think on it by yourself. I want you to understand it via an example. So this is the probability that a given normal random variable is below a given level. So I will plot that, replacing the mean and variance with the mean and variance of the posterior in each of the 200 test points. This is the line. LL is just 200 and one test points, and then the posterior mean at each of the points and the posterior variance at each of the points, the diagonal element of the joint covariance matrix. And this best stuff, well, this is the probability improvement plot. And the best recommendations for next sample based on this acquisition function is the point with largest probability of improvement. So this maximum tells me which is that maximum probability, 0.9888, and it's in the test point whose index is 169. But, okay, let us plot this probability improvement plot and analyze what it means. Here we have the resulting plot in which the olive green line is the probability of improvement. In red, we have the confidence bounds, in black, the mean of the posterior, and in purple, we have a histogram, the probability of a given point attaining the global minimum. And then in here, we have the point with maximum probability of improvement. So what does the green curve mean? Well, first, we see that, for instance, at these points in which my mean crosses the best point, then probability of improvement is 50%. Of course, because half of the points will improve and half of the points will not improve if I throw the dice at a given point here. Indeed, at each abscissa point, if we see in the vertical, let's say, we have kind of a bell curve, this Gaussian with this mean and variance and whatever, so the probability of improvement will be the integral of this curve below this horizontal line indicating the best sample. So in here we'll have a very low probability of improvement. In here, this lower confidence bound, then we will have a 2.5% probability of improvement. In here we have a 50% probability of improvement. And in here, we have a 97.5 probability of improvement. 
end well. In this green vertical line, we have the maximum probability of improvement of 98%. So we see that somehow probability of improvement lies on the conservative side, in the sense that, okay, we are pretty sure that we will improve 99%, but maybe we improve very little. This is kind of a sort of a gradient search in the sense that, okay, I have a sample here, I have a sample there. So if my function is smooth, this seems that it extrapolates downwards. And then, okay, as soon as I get a little bit far away from my best sample, uncertainty crops up. And then, well, this point is kind of a little step in the downhill gradient direction, let's say. And it is related with somehow the point in which the upper confidence bound is lower. You know, its probability of improvement is larger than 0.975 if the upper confidence bound is below y best. So, well, this is the meaning of this probability of improvement. But as we see, we have a large probability of improvement, but we are sort of far away of the points in which we have much higher likelihood of finding the optimum. In the sense that in here, my probability of improvement is, let's say, 80%, but my expected value of the improvement, that will be another acquisition function, is significantly larger than here. So somehow it depends using probability of improvement or a different thing on how risky I wish to be, in the sense that depending on the price of failing, I may decide whether to be 99% sure that I improve, even if my improvement is small, or I might decide in a more risky behavior that maybe I do not improve, but if I improve, I may improve a lot, which will be the other option we'll discuss in SQL videos. So this is somehow the meaning of the probability of improvement in this setup. But for instance, let us consider another data set. And then if I use this data, they are no longer close. So the gradient interpretation, let's say, is no longer valid. And in here, we just have two points and we have been unlucky in the sense that, well, they are well above the mean, well above the expected value. So probability of improvement in that case tells me to go away from my previous samples. And these are the points in which I have a high probability of improving over my best sample, which is this one. These are the points in which the upper confidence bound is closest to the best sample. So if I am unlucky, probability of improvement tells me just go away and, and try somewhere else. And on the other hand, if I am extremely lucky, look at here, I have a sample which is 10 sigma below my average. Well, in here, if I believe my prior, what I should say is just stay there. You will not likely find something better. But okay, this large deviation may hint me the idea of changing my prior. You know, this is too unlikely for me to believe my prior. But if I forget about that hyperparameter optimization, then my probability of improvement plot. This was my sample. And this is the maximum probability. And well, it basically tells me to stay just very close to the last sample. And it seems that, okay, as the mean tended to be decreasing towards the middle, then this seems to say that, okay, just try a little bit left. We'll see. But okay, let us conclude. In this video, we discussed the intuitive meaning of probability of improvement with three data sets. A first data set in which we interpreted that plot as a sort of cautious gradient step because we have two close aligned points that indicated the downward direction. And then we had two other data sets in which basically 
if we had very bad samples, then probability of improvement told me just look elsewhere, the farther the better from your unlucky samples. And if I have very good samples, probability of improvement tells me, okay, keep very close to your best sample. So with these ideas, we end the discussion on this meaning of the probability of improvement and comparison with other acquisition functions will be carried out in SQL videos. For the moment being, we finish now. Thanks for watching.